in this video we will see that I interview which type of questions they ask regarding OSI model A questions so let's see I mean uh, definitely they are going to ask you that what is OSI model layer what protocols on uh, every layer they can ask you uh, how many there are layers and what what is the function of those right and one important question is that for OSI layer that they can ask that what uh, what different vulnerability is related to different different uh, OSI layer means layer wise they are asking you the vulnerability so these type of questions we are going to see uh, in this video so firstly what is OSI model layer it is open system interconnection we know is a reference model for how application communicate over a network generally there are there is seven layers and how actually the communication is happening that is what uh, OSI model layer now second question we have can you tell OSI layers name and at least one protocol for each layer so generally we have seven layers in OSI uh, layer the first one we have physical layer right on which uh, where the actually the bits started where actually the uh, bits you know converted into uh, for the next layer that is uh, if you can see send data onto the physical wire right and if we talk about the protocols if you can see here hops NICS cables these are the some protocols second we have data link layer right where uh, the data framing is happening right and here we get to uh, get the physical address and protocol like switches so, so this is the layer second switches right and network layer on this we have protocol routers and layer 3 switches now what is the difference between that layer 3 switches and layer 2 so on layer 3 there is routing and switches both work right and here only switches now we have the fourth layer transport layers where there is end-to-end -end connections and reliability and the protocol like TCP and UDP session layer we have uh, we used it for generally for the establish and end connections between two hosts so for example uh, protocols like NetBIOS, PPTP present uh, presentation layer we have HTTPS, SSL, JPG these are some protocol and at the last application layer here we have SMTP, Telnet, HTTP, FTP. So whenever any any interview ask you uh, on which layer HTTP works, right? So it is application layer. They can ask uh, some simple terms like on which layer uh, HTTPS works. So it's presentation layer. So this type of questions also can be made. Next question we have: Do you know attack on every uh, uh, sorry every OSI layer? This is what I was talking about. So on application layer, if you can see here, uh, these are attacks, SQL injection, cross-site scripting. Okay. So if you remember, we we, we were talking about client-side, uh, you know, client-side attack about cross-site scripting. So what is client-side? That is obviously application, right? So that is what application layer. And parameter tampering can be happened, slow risk attacks, uh, which is generally used for DDoS. On present, uh, presentation layer, we have attacks like SSL hijacking, uh, des, uh, decryption attacks, and coding attacks. On session layer, we have again session hijacking attack, man in the middle, which is important. They can ask on which layer man in the middle attack uh, generally works. So it's session layer. Now, uh, SSH sniffing can also be done. Transport layer, on transport layer, TCP sequence prediction can be happened, syn flood and UDB based amplification attacks can be happen on network layer IP spoofing and jamming definitely uh, here we got the actually IP right uh, we have already seen here if let me show you again here generally we got the logical uh, logic address that is IP address okay so we were on the network layer so IP spoofing and jamming can be happen here uh, black hole attacks a civil attack packet sniffing can be happen data link here layer here uh, ARP spoofing uh, can be happen because you know uh, there generally we got the MAC address right so ARP spoofing can be happen MAC cloning you can read about ARP that what actually the address resolution protocol so this is nothing but just a, it is used for the mapping of uh, you know MAC, MAC address and uh, IP address so how actually spoofing work you can you can read out google 
I gave you just a, a introduction that what actually the ARP. Now spanning tree attack, VLAN hoping DSCP attacks can be happen, happen here. Physical layer, uh, there uh, at the last layer, definitely physical damage can be happen and it has been seen uh, many times that uh, there is always a physical damage on physical layer. Apart from that, data sniffing can be happen, unauthorized uh, access also. Okay, so uh, on which layer HTTP protocol work? That is application layer. What is MITM? How can you prevent man in the middle attack? Right, so MITM was working where it was working on the session layer. If you can see here, let me show you again. On session layer, it was working man in the middle attack, right? Okay, so MITM attack happens when a communication between two parties is uh, intruded or intercepted by an outside. So let's say there is a, uh, you know, a and B, right? And you are the third party. Uh, you just slide in the, in the center part. A is sending something to B. So you are sitting in the middle. So you are taking something, some data from A and sending to B by modification. But B is thinking that data is coming from A. So it's vice versa. So this is what MITM attack. So what we can do to mitigate it? So we can use the encryption, right? Between both parties, whatever the data is transferring. We can avoid using open Wi-Fi networks and we can use HTTPS, forced TLS or VPN. So we, why we are using VPN? Because uh, it, um, it gives, uh, gives us the option of encrypted tunnel. You can say that with, with the help of encrypted tunnel, we can communicate securely. Now what is sniffing? So and do you know, uh, do you any tool? Okay, there is something error. Uh, do you know any tool for sniffing? Obviously, Wireshark is one of the sniffing tool. A sniffer attack corresponds to the theft or interception of data by capturing the network traffic using a sniffer. I hope you have already used the Wireshark, right? So this is what the sniffing is. So that's it in this video and we'll talk uh, in the next video that how actually you can prevent uh, your organization from ransomware.